When NASA has sent astronauts to explore worlds beyond our own, they've always sent them with supplies they need to survive. Water, oxygen. Life-sustaining cargo goes right alongside the astronauts. That was the case during the Apollo missions to the moon, and it continues to be the case on the International Space Station. This has worked because we haven't strayed too far for too long. But as NASA considers a return to the moon and possibly to Mars and beyond, finding and using resources in those environments is imperative. NASA calls this in situ resource utilization, ISRU for short. Looking at the surface of the moon, it doesn't look like there's much to work with. No plants, no animals, no obvious water just a lot of dust and rocks. But it turns out, that's the key. In the lunar soil, called regolith, there are enough chemical elements to make the resources astronauts would need. NASA scientists and engineers are studying ways to turn those elements into usable resources. In November 2008, NASA traveled to the Big Island of Hawaii, to the Mauna Kea volcano, to run their ISRU technology through analog tests. They employed two reactors hoping to turn that seemingly sterile gray dirt into usable oxygen. We get the material to the reactor and then we do the chemical reaction and then store the oxygen. Tom Simon is the ISRU project office chief engineer. In terms of the chemical processing plant, heat passes over the, the heated regolith. That's when the reduction takes place. Uh, and from that point on, it's mostly cleaning up the, the water, uh, electrolyzing the water, and then cleaning up the product oxygen. And it doesn't take a lot of digging to provide a healthy amount of valuable substances. What we're shooting for is about 1% of the mass of the soil. Larry Clark is the ISRU program manager for Lockheed Martin one of NASA's partners in this project. So in this case, we're taking about a 12 kilogram load to make about 120 grams of water. Depending on where we get the soil on the moon, we could get up to four times that amount. Conservatively speaking, we've been shooting for 1% reduction. And that's really our bare minimum we've seen with all of our samples so far. One of the key strategies of ISRU is to develop machines, rovers and reactors that can work autonomously. So while the machines are busy providing resources, the astronauts will be free to explore and do science experiments. On the moon, we would set up a depot, whether it's the, the fuel cells coming to get oxygen, whether it's the crew coming to get water and oxygen, whether it's the propulsion community coming to get oxygen for propulsion, we would store it in our depot and they would come and get it periodically. For this particular setup, we have a, a cryogenic oxygen tank here. That tank stores about eight hours worth of oxygen that we would make. So imagine if we did that 6,000 hours a year, how much oxygen that would be. We can drink the water, we can breathe the oxygen we make, and we can use it to fuel, fuel cell vehicles. Eventually we can get up to a production rate where we can power the ascent vehicle, we can power launchers. Perhaps we could even power hoppers that would take you from place to place on the moon. So there's lots of different things we can do. NASA sent two prototype reactors to test two different systems. One of the systems, called Pilot, is designed to sit on top of a robotic lander. It could be launched before sending a crew to the moon, touch down, and begin to produce oxygen prior to astronauts arriving. The other prototype system, known as Roxygen, is a larger scale system that might require astronauts to set it up. Both reactors worked well in Hawaii, making researchers optimistic that this approach will be successful on the moon. Scientists and engineers continue to pour over the data from the November 08 tests, trying to optimize the design to create the best system. They plan to bring what they have learned back to Hawaii in February 2010 for more testing.